If you own a mobile phone, you must see this. For years, the experts have been arguing over them. Some say they're perfectly safe. Others claim they fry your brains. Well, an international team of doctors, including two of Australia's finest surgeons, have just released their latest comprehensive research. And as the father of young children, it really made me sit up and take notice. They say prolonged use of mobile phones could double the risk of malignant brain tumours, the deadliest of all cancers, the kind that leaves no survivors. With an entire generation now growing up hooked on their mobiles, that could be absolutely devastating. The Namoy Valley in northern New South Wales is a beautiful place. See the, uh, the range of hills that go The favourite right view of John nice and Margaret nice Bryant. Mm. It's just nice to, to know that we could sit here and look out over there for a while. It's beautiful. Mm. Little piece of heaven on earth, isn't it? Mm. But John is terrified he won't be looking down upon it for much longer. He has terminal brain cancer. You've got to hang on, you've been so positive all throughout. So you just got to keep on going. Yeah. While there's life, there's hope. Ironically, after a life of physical toil on the land, this rough-and-tumble farmer blames modern technology for killing him. His mobile phone. Mate, there's no doubt about mine. I know what, what killed me. John, you're saying what killed you as if you're already dead. Yeah, well, I am dead, aren't I? I'm a dead man walking, really, aren't I? When you think about it. This is when you knew you were in a bit of strife, was it, when you first went out? Oh, yeah, when I started. Last November, John was working in his shearing shed when he lost control of the left side of his body. Doctors found a malignant tumour just behind his right ear. I told Dr. Hughes, he's a very good doctor, I said, I don't want any crap, tell me the truth, you know. He said, I'll tell you the truth. This is the truth. He said, with this disease, there are no survivors, everyone dies. So that was a good introduction to the Tamworth Hospital. <laughs> you kids know how they go to sleep in a tree without falling out? They got sticky bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> this is a large and loving family. I did know. The Bryants have carved a full life here through farming and the family trucking business. John's mobile phone has been an essential tool of the trade for the past 25 years. And he's in no doubt those countless hours with it glued to his ear gave him the brain tumour. I can't begin to imagine what you're going through. No, no one can begin to imagine because people come up to me just, you know, they're trying to be nice and they say, I can imagine how you feel. And I think, no, you can't imagine how I feel, you know. And I reckon it's caused definitely by those bloody mobile phones. Dr. T.O. John insists his brain tumour has been caused by his mobile phone. Do you agree with his diagnosis? Uh, insist is a strong word, uh, and there are always two sides to every story. But if the question is, do I believe that mobile phones can cause brain cancer, the answer is yes, I do. Exactly. The mm. fact that you've deteriorated so much in the last three days means mm. that you probably won't survive more than about three more weeks mm -hmm. with this. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's that bad. Yeah, I know. I know it's bad. Dr. Charlie Teo is John's neurosurgeon, his last hope to beat the tumour. He's also the co-author of a frightening new study that's predicting a dramatic increase in brain tumours caused by the long-term use of mobile phones. That's a huge fear. I mean, what if? What if we're right? Then if we're right, we're going to see a huge increase in brain tumours and brain cancer in the next decade or so. It's going to be frightening. And guess what, Liam? We're already frightened by what we're seeing. Most of us are pretty wary of these things, and with good reason. Microwave ovens use electromagnetic radiation to cook your food. Now, it's exactly the same energy on exactly the same wavelength as the stuff that's being pumped out of your mobile phone. Admittedly, microwaves are a lot more powerful, but you wouldn't consider for a moment holding your ear up to one of these for hours at a time, day after day. Yet that's precisely what most of us are doing with our mobiles. Long-term use of mobile phones is associated with a doubling of the 
risk of being diagnosed with certain brain tumours. You're saying that if you use a mobile phone over an extended period... Right, over 10 years. ...you double your risk of developing a brain tumour. That's what the data that we've analysed, that's what it shows. Vinnie Corona, hello. Canberra neurosurgeon Dr Vinnie Corana yes, worked with Charlie Teo and three other leading scientists to produce this latest report. And he believes mobile phones could be the biggest public health issue since tobacco. Were you surprised at the size of the result? I actually think it may be a, a conservative estimate. You think doubling the risk is conservative? Yes. I would be very happy to be wrong about this because the public health implications of being right about this are enormous. At the moment there are just over four billion users of mobile phones. There are people as young as three using them. And that's where the biggest threat lies, with our kids. Today, being presented with your first mobile is an essential passport to life. Our kids inhabit a wireless world and it's nothing for them to spend hours each day chatting on the phone. On the average I use it about four hours a day. I, use, I normally have long conversations at night with people. I don't know, I use my phone a lot. I've got to probably say about at least four hours as well. Yeah. This is the way we've been brought up to communicate with our mobile phones and it's just the easiest because they're portable, we can take them anywhere. So it's just the easiest way to communicate with our friends. I have been incredibly worried, concerned, depressed at the number of kids that I'm seeing that's coming in with brain tumours, malignant brain tumours. Just in the last three or four weeks I've seen probably half a dozen kids with tumours that really should have been benign and they've all been nasty malignant brain tumours. We are doing something terribly wrong.